In this video, I'm going to show how to use Microsoft Excel to graph intake air temperature, spark advance, and air fuel ratio from the data logs that we captured using the Bavarian Technique tool. Once we've captured the data logs, we saved them to Microsoft Excel format. We must load Microsoft Excel and then load the file. In this case, what we're seeing is what the raw file looks like. In each one of the columns are the values that were captured. We've got RPM, engine speed, induced air, that's our, that's our IAT value. We use throttle valve and actual gear to help us locate the run within this file. Our run will always appear where the throttle is at 100%, so it should be pretty easy to locate. The next column is ambient temperature, that's optional. We can do with or without it. Lambda actual value bank one and two, are those are the AFR values. We need to convert those from lambda to AFR. And then finally, in the last column, are the angle of ignition. That'll tell us the spark advance. So the first thing we need to do is locate our run within this file. I've highlighted the throttle valve. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to locate where they open to 100%. We're going to highlight all the data until we reach max RPM, hopefully around 8,000 to 8,400 RPMs. In this case, we'll just keep going down and we can see that around line 500, we hit 8,087 RPMs before we started to decelerate. So once we have the data highlighted, let's hit Control C to copy it. And then we're going to open up a new tab on the bottom of the screen, insert worksheet, you can either press this button or hit Shift F11 to, to create a new to create a new worksheet. If we hit Control V, we will paste all the data that we just copied in the previous screen. So the first thing we need to do is we need to convert the intake air temperature and the lambda values to a more usable form. So to do that, we need to run a formula in Microsoft Excel. All formulas start with an equal sign. So equals open paren and then highlight on the cell that has the temperature data. And you'll see that it shows up in the, uh, in the column J, J there. So we're going to first multiply that by 9. We're going to divide it by 5, close the parenthesis, and then add 32. That will convert the Celsius to Fahrenheit. The next thing we need to do is we need to convert the lambda to AFR. It's a very simple formula. Like all Microsoft Excel formulas, we start it with an equal sign. Let's highlight the column and we multiply that by 14.7 and that will convert lambda to AFR. But we also have the value in column H to do. We could go through the same procedure that we just went through um, to convert column G to AFR, but a quicker and easier way to do it is to highlight the formula that we just created and put the mouse on that little square box at the bottom right of the corner and drag it to the next column. Now we have AFR for both banks. We want to extend these formulas all the way down to include all of our data. So if we highlight all of these columns, J, K, and L, and then again, putting our mouse on that bottom on that square in the bottom right corner of the highlight, we drag it all the way down to the bottom line 178 in this case. And that copies the formula all the way down. Now we have our intake air temperature and our AFR. Next thing we need to do is generate the graph. To generate the graph, we're going to use a scatter plot with smooth lines. So we, it creates an empty graph. Now we just need to fill it in. Now that we have the blank graph on our screen, we're going to start adding the data. Put your mouse anywhere within the graph and right click. Select data and this dialog box comes up. We click add to start adding the data. In the series name, we're going to type for AFR bank one. AFR1, we need to put that in quotes, so it's equals AFR1 in quotes. In the X value, we're going to get the RPM data. So we're going to start over in column B at the top. We're going to highlight it. We're going to drag the mouse all the way down to the bottom. 
and that creates what's called a range in Excel. We're going to, I highlighted this range, we're going to copy this range and we're going to use it all throughout this demonstration to show how we can use this range and paste it in other areas to make our life go a lot faster and a lot easier. So now that we have that highlighted, we're going to hit Control C to copy that range. Go down to the Y value, we're going to paste it by hitting Control V, and then all we do is we change the range from column B to column K because that's where our AFR data exists for bank one. So change both of those B's to K's, press enter, and now you have a graph that shows AFR bank one. Next we're going to get AFR bank two. We repeat this process by clicking add and the dialog box shows up on the screen. We're going to type AFR2 in quotes. We're going to paste our range that we uh, copied earlier down into the X value. We're going to paste it again in the Y value, but this time uh, we're going to change to column L has our AFR data for bank 2. Hit enter and the AFR data now is on the graph for banks 1 and bank 2. Next we're going to add the spark graph to this to uh, the spark data to the graph. Let's click add one more time to wait for the dialog box to uh, to show up. This time we're going to type spark in the series name spark in quotes we're going to paste our range into both X and Y like we've been doing before. And we're going to change the range in Y to column I because that's where the spark data exists. Click enter. And now we have the spark data on the graph. And finally, we're going to add the IAT data to the graph. So we're going to click Add one more time and wait for the dialog box to show up. And let's type in IAT in quotes, paste our range into both X and Y. The IAT data is in column J because that's where we converted it from Celsius to Fahrenheit. So we're going to change the Y values from column B to column J. If we wanted to graph this in Celsius, we would have used column C instead. Click OK. And now we click OK one more time. And now we have the graph with our IAT, Spark, and AFR data all combined. The graph as it is right now um, isn't very pretty, so we're going to make some adjustments to make the graph more readable and more understandable. The first thing we need to do is we need to put the IAT data on its own separate axis. Um, as it is right now, the values of IAT are so large that they tend to make the, the graphs for Spark and AFR unreadable. So we put our mouse over the uh, line that has IAT data on it and highlights it and kind of looks like it does up there. We're going to right click on it. We're going to select Format Data Series and then we're going to put it on a secondary axis. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the x-axis to a range that is more recognizable as well. Remember we collected data from uh, roughly 2500 RPMs out to Redline. So we're going to change the x-axis to reflect uh, the data that we collected. So click on, say, click on the number 2000 there, and it's going to highlight the whole range for the x-axis. We're going to right click on that and say Format Axis. We check these three boxes for fixed, and we're going to change the values. We're going to start at 2400. We're going to end at 8400. We're going to go in 200 increments, and then we're going to change the alignment. So click on alignment, text direction, uh, rotate 270 degrees, and then the, then the numbers appear straight up and down on the graph. 
We're going to change the x-axis. I usually go from 0 to 32 degrees there. Uh, makes it more readable. So check fixed on both of those. Uh, the, the minimum is already at 0. We're going to change this guy to 32. The next thing we're going to do on the x-axis is we're going to add minor grid lines so that we can kind of follow the values a little bit better. So while you're still on the x-axis, right-click on it one more time, select Add Minor Grid Lines, and now we have uh, grid lines there. We're going to change the uh, value of the y-axis um, for the IAT data, again, to make it a little bit more readable. Uh, I usually go from 0 to, I'm sorry, from 100 to 130. So we're going to uh, select Fix for both of those. Go 0 to 130, press OK. And now we have a pretty good uh, resemblance of our graph. It's, it's pretty readable. The only thing we need to do now is to make it a little bit larger. Lastly, we're going to make this graph a little bit larger. So we click on the Format tab at the very top of the screen. And we can see that um, over on the right, we have the height and the width. We're going to select the height, and then I'm going to change it to 6 inches by 12 inches. So after I put in 6, move the cursor down to the height, uh, type in 12, move the cursor back, kind of forces it to do what you told it to. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to add a title to it. And uh, you can uh, we're going to use the file name, find out where you had it on your, uh, where you saved it. What I usually do is to use the file name is I, I highlight the file, I act like I'm going to rename it, which opens up a, a little dialog box that lets you type into it. But instead of typing it in, now that that's highlighted, I hit Control C to copy that file name, and then go back to our graph. We click this time. We click on the layout tab, click on uh, chart title, centered above title, and we uh, put our cursor on the, the function bar right there and hit control V to paste, enter, and now we have our graph 6 inches by 12 inches with the title of the file at the top. And that's how you take a data log that was collected with the Bavarian Technique tool and uh, using Excel create graphs that will show you AFR, IAT, and Spark Advance. Thank you.